So the healthcare system in America is incredibly expensive compared to other modern nations. Now, there are, of course, defenders of the status quo that say, oh, no, 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 you don't understand. Insurance provides a vital function. All you have to do is empower insurance companies uh, by removing regulations and giving them lower taxes and then let the free market come in and lower costs. So, so this is a problem with overregulation. This is a problem with too much government, right? Uh, the insurance companies, they're going to act on their own. Uh, and that is the way. We got to let the uh, for-profit free market work its magic. Really. So let's ask uh, Drew Calver that question. Hmm? What do you think about that? Now, Drew Calver uh, is a high school history teacher in Texas. Uh, now, he recently went through a life-threatening experience. He had actually collapsed in his bedroom from a disastrous heart attack. Now, uh, he recalled, I thought I was dying. He then called out to the other person in the house, his oldest daughter, Eleanor, now seven. Using his voice, he texted his wife, who was at the store of their youngest, Emery. A neighbor rushed him to the nearby emergency room at St. David's Medical Center on April 2nd of 2017. So what started out is, could have been a disastrous story. Actually, look, uh, turned out somewhat decently, but wait, then it goes into disaster. Uh, let me give you the details. Now, the ER doctors had confirmed the trauma to Calvert's heart and admitted him to the hospital's cardiac unit. The next day, doctors implanted stents in his clogged Widowmaker artery. So, look, he survived. Um, and in any other country, this would have been the end of it, right? Great, he survived the Widowmaker. Uh, he's doing much better. He's on the road to recovery. But remember, we live in America. Now, the heart attack, and just to show you his physical condition, because I'm certain some people will bring that up. Calver was an avid swimmer who had just competed in an Ironman triathlon just five months prior. So someone like that is apparently in pretty good shape. And yet even he can have a heart attack. It can happen to anybody. Now, anybody who's ever had a medical emergency in America should understand the next part. Even from his hospital bed, Calver had asked whether his health insurance would cover all of what they did. And now, this is a financial worry that accompanies nearly every American hospital stay. He was concerned because St. David is out of network on his school district health plan. The hospital told him, oh, no, no, don't worry. We accept your insurance. Even though you're out of network, don't worry about it. You'll accept the insurance. Okay. Okay. Well, let me get to the details on that a bit later. But first... This is only something that's unique to America, right? Nobody in any other modern industrialized country has to worry about, ooh, I, am I in network? Especially, that's the last thing you want to worry about, especially during an emergency. You go in, you're treated. That's it. And then you can focus on recovery. But unfortunately, that is not what happens in America. Now, how much should it cost? The hospital had charged $164,941 for his surgery and his four-day stay in the hospital. Now, Aetna, uh, which administers health uh, benefits for the Austin Independent School District, paid the hospital, as insurance is supposed to do. Now, how much did they pay? Again, this is insurance, $162,000. It's a lot of money. There's no way uh, you can handle it on your own, but that's why you get insurance, right? Well, it turns out the insurance company paid the hospital a total of $55,840. That leaves him, Calver, on the hook for over $109,000. Now, despite that, right, the hospital with the prior, uh, hospital's prior assurance, Calver believed that he wouldn't bear that much of the cost, right? I mean, certainly, maybe they would come in and, and, and not charge that much, and, and maybe insurance might cover a little bit more. You know, look, I, I needed to have this surgery. It's, it's really not my fault. I had to go out of network. And they said they cover me, so, well, I mean, there's no way, right? No way. Well, let's do a breakdown, right? Now, the total bill is $164,941, uh, and that includes $42,000, for four stents and 10,000 for room charges. Now I'll get to the stents later and why this is important. Uh, Calver's insurer 
uh, paid about $55,840, and the hospital billed him for $108,951.31. Now, here's the thing. I tell you that because, again, that's the, that's the total cost. Now I'm going to get to why. Now, St. David's Healthcare is a large hospital system in central Texas. It is run by HCA Healthcare, the nation's largest for-profit hospital chain, and two nonprofit foundations. Now, without this care, I need to mention he would be dead. He's not dead. That's great. But he's left with $109,000. That's an amount that is twice his annual pay as a teacher. Wow. And to make it worse, the hospital's billing company sent a notice June 26, urging him to take advantage of this, quote, final opportunity to settle your balance. Oh, look, it's a final opportunity. They're giving you an opportunity to pay them $109,000. Honestly, who can come up with that amount of money? I mean, let's just pull that out of my ass, says absolutely no school teacher. And, and again, it's not like he didn't have insurance. He had insurance. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. What's the, what's the point of insurance if it only pays about a third of a massive bill? That's one of the big problems here. Insurance companies are a ripoff. Not only that, but look at how much we pay. It, we pay double what they do in healthcare costs per capita than Canada. And one reason is because of predatory billing practices from, as I mentioned before, for-profit hospitals and for-profit insurance. Now, St. David's is a for-profit hospital, right? So they do something called surprise bills and balance billing. Okay, well, let me explain what that is. Now, surprise bills occur when a patient goes to a hospital in his insurance network, but receives treatment from a doctor that does not participate in the network. So the hospital's in network, but you have a doctor that's there that happens to be treating you that day that is not in your network. And therefore, you get a bill because the insurance won't cover it. So that's, that's a surprise, right? Surprise, you're going to cover all this. Now, they can also occur in cases like Calvers, where insurers will pay for needed emergency care at the closest hospital, even when it is out of network. But then the hospital and the insurer may not agree on a reasonable price. The hospital then demands the patient pay the difference in a practice called balanced billing. So that's what happened to Calver, right? So because the insurance company could not agree on the price, you get the bill. Now, remember... Insurance companies make more money the less they pay out. But if you're a for-profit hospital, you're also going to charge more because guess what? You need to go uh, and make as much money for your shareholders as possible. And that means overcharging people like Mr. Calver. Uh, now, here's the thing. So, look, this is obviously a ridiculous practice, right? And there's been a lot of complaints about it. So as a result, there have been states that have actually tried to minimize this practice. Now, these states include even Texas, as well as New York and California and New Jersey. They've all passed laws to help shield consumers from surprise bills and balanced billing, particularly for emergency care. Because again, if it's an emergency, you can't just go and say, oh, oh, sorry. I know I'm in the middle of dying right now, but I don't, is our hospital in network? Is our, is our doctor going to be in network? Because if so, I mean, you're going to have to drive me somewhere else. No, you're having an emergency. Your life is on the line. What are you going to do? So they passed these laws. However, they left, as usual, a gigantic loophole. It turns out that those state-mandated protections don't apply to people like the Calver family who get their insurance coverage from employers that are self-insured. Meaning the companies of public or, or public employers pay claims out of their own funds. Federal law governs those health plans and it does not include those protections. In reality, it turns out that 60% of people with employer health benefits are covered by a self-insurance plan. And of course, 
so many people are covered by this, but they don't know it. They don't know it. Since employers typically hire an insurer to administer the plan, and employees carry a card bearing the name of Blue Cross Blue Shield or another major insurer. So you can be insured, but get stuck with a major bill and not know why until it's too late. Insanity. But it gets worse. In the statement, St. David's Healthcare defended its handling of Calvert's bill and sought to blame the school district and the insurance company for offering such a narrow network. Now, I'm going to point out why this is absurd. They said, while we did everything right in this particular situation, the structure of the patient's insurance plan as a narrow network product placed a large portion of the financial responsibility directly on the patient because our hospital was not in network. But wait, they said, don't worry about it. We'll take your insurance anyway. Insanity. Uh, sorry. D they're simply out of network. What can we do? What can we do? But but you told them already that you uh, would accept their insurance. And then you accept a fraction of it. And, stick, and, and you end up sticking this uh, gigantic bill on somebody who cannot afford to play the, uh, pay it. It gets worse. And this is why St. David's is, uh, well, for lack of a better word, while they're bullshitting you, uh, they said, industry analysts and consumer advocates say that St. David's has a reputation for exorbitant billing and for trying to collect big payouts as an out-of-network provider. Remember, that's that's their whole that's their whole argument. We're we're out of network, sorry. What nothing we could do. But then they decide to stay out of network so they can get more money. According to Dr. Merritt Quorum, he said, this is a well-known problematic provider. We've seen multiple bills from them and they're always highly inflated. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Quorum, of course, uh, is the chief executive of Well Rhythms. Now, they scrutinize medical bills for self-funded employers and other clients nationwide. So they look and they see if you're inflating these bills. Now, Well Rhythms reviewed Calvert's bill in detail at the request of Kaiser Health News and determined that a reasonable reimbursement would have been $26,985. That is less than what half of what Aetna paid. Well Rhythms, uh, as I said before, uh, looked at that half, half of what they paid. So the insurance company is also getting cheated, weirdly enough. Now, Healthcare Blue Book, which offers cost em estimates for medical tests and treatments, also arrived at a similar conclusion. It said a fair price for hospitalization in Austin involving four heart stents would be a total of $36,800. St. David's Medical Center charged at least four times that amount. Quorum and other analysts who reviewed the bill said several charges stood out especially on the four stents, which were billed at $42,940. Coronary stents are typically metal mesh tubes implanted in arteries to improve blood flow. Most are coated with drugs to assist in healing. St. David's charged $19,708 apiece for two synergy stents made by device giant Boston Scientific. Two other stents were used were far cheaper. The $20,000 price tag represents a significant markup of what U.S. hospitals typically pay themselves for stents. The median price paid by hospitals for the Synergy stent was $1,153 over the past year, according to the nonprofit research firm ECRI Institute. So get this. They buy the stents for a low, low price, and guess what they do? They jack up the price. Quorum said that St. David's charge of over $19,000 for those stents is absolutely outrageous. And I agree. This, look, this is what happens when you have a profit motive in healthcare. When you run our healthcare system as a means to make money. Tell me again how the free market is better, how the free market is supposed to fix this mess. Calver still owes 
$108,951.31. Nobody is helping him. He's going to have to start a GoFundMe or something. And I don't know if he already has because he doesn't know when he's going to pay this. In fact, the hospital's debt collector sent the Calvers a letter August 3rd demanding payment in full. As if that's going to happen. As if somebody can come up with over a hundred grand. Look, this is the cost of healthcare in America. This is an example of how our healthcare system is literally killing us. This profit motive in healthcare is a problem. It is the problem. Now, the solution to that is Medicare for all. H.R. 676, Bernie Sanders bill. That's the solution. Green is the problem. Single payer is the solution. Over 710 of Americans want it, including a majority of Republicans, 52%. And even the most conservative estimate, that plan saves Americans $2 trillion. And also gives you peace of mind. Imagine surviving a heart attack and then not going broke because of it. Imagine being able to, while you're recovering, say, I don't have to worry about getting a massive bill. That's what every other modern country does. And it's because they have single payer. They've taken the profit motive out of medicine. And they're not only happier, but they're healthier. That's what we need to do here in America. We're the only country that hasn't done it yet. And we cannot wait anymore. The time is right. This system right now is killing us. It's destroying lives. This school teacher, there's no way he can afford that bill. No way. We need to fix that system so that this doesn't happen again. We need Medicare for all, and we need it now.